I'm Andrew. I run a shop called Needles and Pens. I'm Kelly. I run LittlePaperPlanes.com. We both operate a business that offers objects and works from makers and creators. There's a subtle movement happening out there. People are choosing more unconventional career paths in order to have greater control of their lives. They're re-engaging with artisanal craftsmanship, trades that were often deemed obsolete by mass production. They're once again making things with their own hands and managing to sustain themselves by doing it. Welcome to Working Title, a show where we explore the makers, creators, and craftspeople of the Bay Area. If you've ever been to Mollusk in the Sunset District or Voyager in the Mission District, you may have noticed these unique treehouse structures or the backroom submarine build-out. Today we're going to talk to the San Francisco artist Jay Nelson who's responsible for their creation. pretty much lived always within, you know, a 30-minute drive of the beach. I think it'd be pretty hard for me to live anywhere else. I just kind of built surfing into my life and it's like kind of a, a daily ritual, at least checking the surf or having some sort of like relationship with the ocean. Okay, well, um, my name's Jay Nelson. I, uh, I'm 32 years old, I guess. Good, Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Hey. Hi, Kelly. Good to see you. Cool. So, this is my house. Hi. That's Johnny. Hi, Johnny. Come on, Johnny. Let's do it. Whoa. Yeah, it's this thing. Wow, that is really amazing. The roof's on. The walls are up. I'm building the windows in my, in my shop downstairs below my studio right now. And um, I have the door done, and then I have to do the interior. So, and I have to build a staircase. You can only design so much on the ground, and it's what's really exciting about tree houses. And I think it's, I think that there's like a very clear connection with like making a painting and making a tree house or making art is that you have to, like you kind of learn as you go and you have to design as you go. Like you can look up at a tree and you're like, oh, that would be a perfect place for a house. And you always do that. But then once you get up in the tree and you look at the view and you see what's around you, you have to work with the tree. You're kind of forced to be creative. You have these parameters and you have to, um, you kind of just have to work with what you got. Like people are always kind of asking me like, what's the connection between like that painting and like that, you know, like one of these structures, you know, these structures that you build. And just as I was saying earlier, I feel like, um, like when I come to my studio, I just make what I want to make. And a lot of my work is like in reaction to the other work. Well, this one's like a whole house. I was really trying to just like throw out ideas of how, um, like, like different types of living, like urban living situations. And I kind of had this idea of like this car is kind of like an, a temporary autonomous structure. Like you can go in it and you can live in it for maybe a day or two. But you always need to kind of like come back to something to like recharge it or to like have a nice like place to come back that's just not like a safe place. So I built this structure and this is kind of like an apartment that houses you know, all these people and they have these cars and it's almost like a communal place. And I was imagining that maybe it would just be in Golden Gate Park. So that's why I called it the Golden Gate. Oh, cool. I don't know. I live right here and I always walk around and think about Golden Gate Park. I wonder a lot of times like how anybody uh, like us now who's mm -hmm. coming out of college is going to be able to afford living in San Francisco. Like rent has literally doubled in the last like you know, 10 years or something since I was getting out of college. And it's like, what happens when all like the artists and the people who, you know, like make, this make, make yeah. the city what it is can't afford to live here. I think we all think about that a lot. So yeah, and so like that structure was kind of like an attempt to like explore like what are the, what are like other options? You know? 
know, like maybe hey, it's I don't think it's like a real option, but it's a, maybe just a step in like a direction or like a way to kind of have a conversation. You know, you, you made these tree houses as a kid. And at what point did you realize you're like, I want to show this in a, in a commercial setting or a gallery setting? I really, I really liked Neils and Pens and Adobe Books. I wasn't really into the, the bigger galleries, but more like the, these galleries that were kind of, you know, in stores or bookshops or different things that were kind of, they felt like, like scrappy. low pressure, scrappy. Like there wasn't the pressure to sell anything. And so the artwork was always way more interesting to me. I kind of thought like it might be cool to recreate this treehouse with like the same kind of like scavenging from the neighborhood. And that, that treehouse so, is over at Mollusk now, right? Yeah. The first one that you made. Yeah. And it was there for a really long time. I yeah. remember, I remember you saying how like you, you really wanted to like live in it when you built it. You're like, yeah. Because you, you were kind of homeless at the time, or so you wouldn't really have. It a, was a little bit of a scam. A spot. <laughs> I was like yeah. kind of trying to scam yeah. you guys. Yeah. After that, I kind of, I think there was people liked that treehouse, and they were like, "Build oh, the treehouse here and here." Your goal in life was to make as much money as possible. You could have become an investment banker. You could have done something else. Yeah. I don't even know if, like, being an investment banker, are you really guaranteed to like be rich? And I don't think there are. Not necessarily. Like, I don't anymore. think there's any. Like, that's the thing. It's like I, I kind of think that this is the best shot yeah. I have right now. It's like what I'm doing. Like, that's I don't true. really, I don't, and I think I'm doing okay. Mm -hmm. And I know what you're getting at. I know well, you. The whole want idea of a struggling, want, starving artist. You know what I mean? It's I a choice that, that, that people make. But I don't think that really exists. Really? Like I've never believed in that in like struggling artist really? thing. I feel like I know a few. But... Really? You do? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, well, it's only if you really want to buy into that and believe. Yeah. But I think Jay's I, I think. a perfect example of like how you can. He's created a hybrid sure. lifestyle, and so I think that there's certain paths that artists take and if when you have your hands in a few different pots as a creative person I think that that's a way to piece together income I mean I don't think there's anything overly romantic about being a starving artist I don't no, think anyone wants to be that I don't believe that but but I think it's, it's just kind of what happens as an artist because it's not do you think it happens I don't I know really anyone do. Who, do, who is it but I think we all just approach it differently so some people are not as aggressive at figuring out how to uh, survive monetarily and so some people might be the starving artist. I guess I always feel that like choosing a path that's in the arts is always going to be more difficult than than choosing a path that's just a standard go get a nine to five yeah. job. I mean I I feel like my approach has always been and it's maybe been a little bit naive but I've always thought like if I work hard I will do well. I pretty much look back on every single day at the end of the day and I'm like, what did I do today? I just want to like get stuff done and do stuff. To me, like successful is looking back after a year and saying like, I got that done, I got that done, I did that, I did that, like this happened, like good, good, good. Checking everything off. It's kind of... <laughs> Building tree houses? That is kind of amazing that you can make a living off of that. And that's something that just naturally happened out of his own love for building tree houses. Do you think he's made it? Like, is he a model of success? From what I've seen of his lifestyle, from where he lives and how he lives it, the different practices that he does, as well as involving surfing in his community within Ocean Beach, I want his life. People like Jay are becoming more common in the Bay Area, no longer relying on conventional career paths and redefining what it means to have a job. They're achieving their dreams through alternative methods. 